what we're going to be learning how to do today is use Microsoft Excel on your iPads in order to do calculations for you. When you have to do repetitive calculations, Excel is a pretty powerful tool uh, to help you with that. So just to kind of get the lay of the land so you're familiar with ev where everything is, um, when you're looking at cells here, they have letters across the top, numbers along the sides to help you identify things like uh, we're currently in cell A9. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see this little F of X. That's called your formula bar. So if you have to type, sometimes you have to click in there to get uh, your keyboard to show up. Um, or that's where we're going to type some formulas in just a little bit. So. I'm going to start by putting some numbers in our cells here that we're going to do some calculations with. Uh, and right now when I'm in cell A1, there's no keyboard for me to start typing yet. If you tap in that little F of X near the top, that prompts your keyboard to show up. So I'm just going to put some numbers in these cells. Um, I'll hit so the number 7, and then if I hit return, it moves down to the next cell there. So I'll do 5, uh, 20. 75, and 145, let's say. Uh, and then in cell B1, I'll tap there. I'll do 18 and 49, uh, 36, 325, and 220. say that when I'm doing some calculations, I want to take the stuff that's in column B divided by the stuff that's in column A and have it display the answers in column C. So what I'm going to do is first click where I want my first answer to go. So I want my first answer to go in cell C1. Next, I'm going to tap up at that F of X bar at the top, and I'm going to type an equal sign. When you first type an equal sign into that formula bar, it tells Excel that you want it to calculate something for you. You don't want it to display the text that you are typing, but you want it to solve a math problem for you. So I'm going to type an equal sign first. You can find the equal sign down here by the letter V. So equals. And then I want to take the stuff in column B divided by the stuff that's in column A. So I want it to take B1, B1, and it'll highlight it for you in a color to say, you mean this cell? Yep. I want you to take B1 and divide it by A1. So the division button in Excel is right above the letter B here, that slash. So I'm going to hit the slash, and then I'm going to type A1, and it'll highlight that for you in another color. So you know, is that the cell you're referring to? Yes. So if I hit the return, it does what 18 divided by 7 is, displays our answer. Well, what if I wanted to do that same thing all the way down? 49 divided by 5, 36 divided by 24, 325 divided by 75. I want it to do a repetitive calculation but change the numbers every time. What you can do, I'm going to tap back in that C1 cell. If I press and hold on cell C1, um, some other choices come up there. I'm going to choose the fill option all the way on the right. And then you can see instead of circles surrounding that cell, we get squares instead. I'm going to click on that lower right-hand green square there, and I'm going to click and drag and expand my rectangle. When I do that, it just filled the formula all the way down, um, but it did B2 divided by A2, and B3 divided by A3, B4 divided by A4, and displays the answers. What's kind of nice in Excel is if you mess up, it's okay. Like if you said, oh shoot, I didn't mean to type in a 7 in cell A1. I wanted to type in the number 2 instead. If I click on A1, 
and then back up in that f of x, and I get that flashing cursor there, I can delete my 7 and type a 2. When I hit return, I want you to keep your eyes on what's happening in cell C1. It automatically changed my answer to 9. When I changed A1, it knows that it has to change the answer in C1 as well. What if we didn't want to divide by the column that's right next to it every time, but what if we wanted to maybe divide by a specific cell every time? So I wanted to take what was in B1 and divide it by A1, but I wanted to take B2 and divide that by A1 and B3 by A1, B4 by A1, divide by A1 every single time and display the answer to that math problem in column D. I would first tap where you want your first answer to go, then tap in the F of X bar. I'm going to hit that equal sign, so that way Excel knows that it's doing a calculation for me. I would like the stuff that's in column B, so I'm going to keep B kind of broad, and I'm just going to say B1. Divide that by specifically A1 every time. So to lock Excel into a specific cell, I'm going to do dollar sign A, dollar sign 1. The dollar sign is just above the D, if you're looking for it there. And you'll see it'll highlight it there for you. When I hit return, I'm still going to have 18 divided by 2, so my answer will still be 9. But now, if I click and drag that formula and copy it down, fill it down, I should see the results of 49 divided by 2, 36 divided by 2, 325 divided by 2. So again, to get that fill down for a formula, you first click in the cell where the formula is. Press and hold on that cell, fill, click and drag and expand that box, and now you can see the results of everything divided by 2. If I said, oh no, I messed up, I wanted cell A1 to be 3, not 2, we can tell it to change that to be a 3, and you'll see everything changes on the fly when I hit return. Pretty cool. Uh, what if you wanted to multiply things instead of divide things? Uh, where's the multiplication symbol in Excel? Uh, so let's say you wanted to take the stuff that was in column D and multiply it by the number 5 and show the answers to that in E. So you click where you want your first answer to go, then the F of X equals to tell it to do some math, and you could say, take the stuff that's in column D. I'm going to keep it broad this time, not a specific cell. So no dollar sign. D1. Multiply that by 5. Uh, so if you want to multiply, the multiplication symbol is the asterisk right here above the letter G. So times 5 equals. So there's 6 times 5. If you press and hold. I could fill and expand. And now you see whatever is in column D times 5. One other last little formatting thing. Uh, if you want Excel to work with scientific notation numbers, as you guys are going to when you do your calculations, um, Excel doesn't understand spaces. It doesn't understand X as a multiplication sign and it doesn't understand uh, superscript, uh, things that look like little exponents there. What it has been programmed to do, like let's say you had the number 5.1 times 10 to the 18th. Um, what I would type is 5.1, and then for times 10 to the 18th, I'm going to type the letter E, 18th. E in Excel is just like 
like your graphing calculators will often display ease means times 10 to the. And if I hit return, you could see it adjusts the formatting just slightly, and it turns that E into a capital E and then positive 18. Let's say that you wanted your answer to not be shown in scientific notation format, but you wanted to see what 5.1 times 10 to the 18th looks like um, in a traditional format number. If I click on the letter G at the top, it highlights the whole column. And then I'm going to click on the ABC123 near the top, right up here. See that ABC123? I'm going to click on that button. And then it gives you all kinds of choices of how to display your numbers. You could uh, say, right now you'll see if you scroll, scientific is checked. But let's say you say, I don't want scientific. I want it to just be a traditional normal number. If I click away, you'll see that it has expanded G to be 5.1 times 10 to the 18th, but in a standard format number. That's kind of difficult to read. So it's probably best to leave that guy in scientific notation. Right now, my column has two decimal places, 5.10. You can adjust decimal places in the same place. If I click on that ABC123 near the top, there's the choice to increase decimal. So if I hit that a couple times, you can see how now I have 5.1000. What if I wanted a column E to be shown in scientific notation? So I click on the letter E, ABC123, and say, make that scientific notation for me. That would be kind of strange to have column E in scientific notation because those numbers are so small. Times 10 to the first power, times 10 to the second power. Uh, when you have a really big number like 10 to the 18th, then it makes sense to do scientific. But small numbers, you could go, nope, never mind. I really just wanted it to be a regular number. And it turns back into a regular number there for you. Your goal for part three of this lab, you're going to be opening up a file on Schoology that has some numbers already typed in there for you. And your goal is to come up with the correct formulas to have Excel do some calculations for you. Uh, and we're going to have time in class where everybody's going to be working on this at lab table. Uh, but this video is just to get you ready for how you do those formulas. I'll be there to help you because we'll be doing it during class, but this is just a little sneak preview to get you ready for class time. Uh, if you have any questions, jot them down and you can ask when we're together. See you soon.